Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post-Watershed production. Good evening and welcome to a squeaky clean late night large. Scrubbing so hard the skin comes off is me, Aaron Bliss, and knocking back a pint of Jay's fluid is Mike Large. I am indeed. Good evening, everyone. Tonight's late night large theme will be hygiene, because hygiene is something that you're often accused of lacking. Is it fuck? <laughs> Would you, would you like to refute these charges? Yeah, you're full of shit. <laughs> well, that's what she said about you. You're full of shit. <laughs> Just because I don't you know, wash my hands every two seconds after I touch something. Uh, we don't uh, want to know what you touch, Mike. Uh, yeah. So hygiene, Mike, what, what's, uh, what's the first sort of way of defining hygiene for you? Cleanliness, I guess. Well, what's cleanliness? Remember, we're, we're talking as if we're talking to either... A, a very dumb child or an alien. Did you hear that, listeners? Aaron just calls you a dumb child or an alien. <laughs> I believe I was kind of implying that we were dumb children. But carry on. Or aliens. Or aliens, perhaps. No, I... I, I also feel like a spectator. Right? I think that Participant. you... Yeah, well, that's the story of your life. Uh, oh! Uh, as um, opposed to you as the transgressor. That's right. <laughs> no, but... um you, Yeah, no, I, I think you are probably an alien. And I'm definitely, probably maybe an alien. Enough about the anal probes. No, well, that's what I was going to get onto eventually. Well, we're talking about hygiene. Yeah, well, probing aside. Yeah. What does hygiene mean to you? You, you said, okay, you said cleanliness. Or, well, yeah, right. not being dirty, using soap, etc. Yeah, but hang on, hang on, hang on. It's not, it's not necessary. There's a specific part of it, but hygiene isn't just cleaning up dirt, is it? No, no, of course it's not. I was giving an example. Okay. Well, carry on. There's lots of different types of hygiene, like personal hygiene, isn't there? Obviously, which is yeah, to do with cleanliness, dirt, and things okay, like that. Okay, no, hang on, we're going, we're going around the, we're going around the maypole a bit. Okay, let me be specific. Why, why hygiene? What, what's the purpose of hygiene? Why, why cleanliness? Why, why, why should we to be clean? eliminate germs and diseases and shit? <laughs> okay, slightly different. Yeah, so you're saying to keep to keep bacteria and germs away because they might lead to disease and infection. Yeah, and yeah. all that. Okay, <clears throat> okay, Mr. Scientist. Okay, so we've 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 agreed that hygiene hygiene has generally been used because nobody likes getting sick, do they? Nobody likes getting infected, unless of course it's a uh, crab from Mike. Yeah, well, sorry about me. But hygiene has been important for particularly the last few hundred years of our existence. Not me and Not Mike's. so much beforehand. No, because obviously things like the plague and what have you, that probably hygiene as a concept would have really assisted those poor people. So rather than just, you know, torching the corpses, perhaps they could have tried saving themselves while they were still alive. As funny as it sounds, Mike, like we say, in medieval times and what have you, hygiene was kind of an alien concept. People only really reacted... Would you would you say it's fair that people only really reacted to what they saw? Yeah. What they could actually perceive with their eyes? Yeah, well, they didn't understand no. anything else. They, they didn't they see it, it wasn't there. Apart from the very smartest, who probably right, yeah. were, 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 uh, were denounced as heretics. Pe yeah, people, people didn't have... People didn't get the connection between being filthy and being sick. There was no kind of connection between washing their hands, uh, brushing their teeth, uh, changing their clothes more than once a lifetime. You know, those kinds of things. Changing their adult nappy. <laughs> their adult nappy. <laughs> is that just me? I think it is just you. Mm. Keep your sexual proclivities out of this. Sorry. Obviously, since we've come a long way since medieval England and the medieval world mm, yeah, we've 
Yeah, I mean, immediate, the immediate thing you think of with hygiene is obviously medical hygiene. In fact, no, sorry, personal hygiene for medical purposes. But, obviously, medical hygiene is another important aspect. Mike, do you, I, obviously, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try and check this out in the break, but, you know, it's fairly recently that the medical profession, I say fairly recently, in the last sort of couple of hundred years, that the medical community understood that for in things like keeping operating environments sterile was vital towards preventing infection like keeping instruments sterile washing hands regularly wearing gloves those kinds of things yeah. do you think it took us a, a bit of a long time considering how how evolved human beings are it took us quite so long to discover that when you're say amputating someone's limb it's pretty important to keep everything clean people didn't believe stuff unless they could see it and given that we need science to see things they couldn't see it so it didn't it wasn't an issue it didn't happen it was it didn't exist but now science can show us but obviously then it couldn't okay that's probably the difference that's fair enough yeah i think people were I don't think everyone is dumb, right? That's ever lived. <laughs> they could been. they could probably draw think, oh, well sometimes when we roll around in shit we get ill. <laughs> <coughs> you know what I mean? Or do you, do you know what I mean? They could <laughs> Some, they could make the connection. Sometime. Most people would probably be able to make the connection. Yeah. I I guess so. But you, a lot of people wouldn't have believed it because they couldn't see it. Yeah. Do, do you think it was, like what I said, do you think it was because, obviously, the, the slightly dumber segments of uh, of the population looked to their their uh, leaders for inspiration, and when those leaders didn't have an answer, they just kind of assumed there was no answer, whereas, like you say, there's, there's obviously always going to be very smart people throughout history who well, are probably see- saying... Yeah, we go back oh, no, 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 years. You see your, your king living like a slob or something, like mm. being a like fat, greasy, horrible. You talking about Henry VIII? Yeah, really. That was a picture I had in my head. Oh yeah, um, always like vile little thing, and you <laughs> or big thing. Yeah, uh, grotesque. Think, well, it's good enough for them. Enough. Yeah, true. That's how he's living, then we, you, why is it an issue for me? Exactly. And, w- and we forget, obviously, we live in a massive information age where we can literally find out the square root of pretty much anything, anything that's ever happened through human history at the click of a mouse. And we forget back then that people didn't have any connection outside their immediate communities and, say, the tax collectors that rode round or proclaiming the uh, latest orders from the king, like you say. I, I can see maybe why it took so long. M- m- connectivity and communication as much as anything else and obviously like we said you get the most powerful people in society and someone suggests an idea that might not necessarily challenge their power but you know shake up the people that they rule over you know make them make them a little bit restless or whatever and they probably don't want to hear it yeah very good point yeah People, patients were dying when they even had simple operations which involved any kind of exposure, as in, say, an amputation of a limb or anything that involved cutting or going in the body in any way would would most likely... I mean, think about all the deaths from childbirth and what have you as well, which could possibly have been prevented just by simple hygiene steps, making sure the theatre is completely sterile, everyone wearing completely sterile clothing gloves all these kinds of things and and they're quite you know quite simple uh other procedures which later were discovered to have uh, you know contributed to the uh, the spread of disease and what have you uh, medical waste obviously you having to dispose of it correctly and securely not leave it festering in an open bin for instance so yeah eventually by the mid 20th century most of these procedures were refined simple hygienic procedures and uh, it's contributed to where we are today and then obviously super bugs like MRSA mysteriously began emerging when uh, public cleaners at hospitals were turned over to the private sector oh you had so, to fucking throw something in didn't you Mike are you a stickler for hygiene do you buy many toiletries 
do I buy many? I buy essential toiletries. Like I'm not a tart. Go on, like toilet roll. No, oh, Mike, you know what I'm talking about. That's not a toiletry. Of course it is, you dick. No, but that's not what I'm talking about. You knew that. <laughs> do, uh, do, do you? Do, so if someone says I'm just going to buy some toiletries, they don't buy toilet roll. What they? What they I might. Mean? I know what you mean. Yes, go on. What kind uh, of things? <clears throat> oh. Okay. You have no, shower no. gel, shampoo, and then you've got hand wash. I have hand wash, I think. Oh, Toothpaste, yeah. obviously. Okay. Toothbrush. Antiperspirant, deodorant. Uh, yeah, both, yeah. Moisturiser? Yeah, aftershave. <laughs> Not moisturiser, though. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, okay. I guess. I don't need to, I've got beautiful skin. You wish. Uh, shaving, shaving foam. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all that kind of stuff. All that jazz, all the usual shit. Do you, put, do you pay a lot of attention to your, uh, not appearance, but just your general cleanliness? Are you are you the kind of person mm. who has to like shower two or three times a day, or or do you, or do you like only shower when you're like going out? No, or? I don't like not having a shower at some like at least once a day. Okay. Sometimes two or three times a day. It depends what I've been doing. Like if I go out <laughs> for football or something, then I have one. Yeah. When I get back, for example. Okay. Like, well, for example, yesterday I had two showers. Yeah. Okay. I had a shower in the morning. I went to work. <laughs> I came back. I got changed. I went to football. I came back. I had a shower. <laughs> okay. I went to bed. It's, it's not an inquisition, but you no, don't have to I be so just, defensive. No, I was just. Oh, no, I'm just saying. No, I'm, I'm. I'm similar. Yeah. I'm the same. I obviously, shower every morning. But uh, if if I'm doing nothing but working, then obviously there'd be no purpose for another one. It's nice to feel fresh if as well. Moment, yeah. Fresh no, it is. It's a pleasant sensation. But obviously, there's a th- such a thing as too much hygiene. Obviously, if you if you're going OCD and scrubbing, Dude, this is the thing. Well, I don't mind getting root deep and dirt and <laughs> just and shit like that. I've got a good immune system, and that's probably because of that. Yeah, that's a- that's actually just as liberating sometimes. I mean, like I say, we've already discussed before. You go to a festival. Once you go past the first day without showering, you actually feel really good, liberated, and 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 quite comfortable in the fact that. Hey, I've, Everyone I've, I've shit. got that layer of hum, but everyone else has as well. Doesn't really bother me. And Mike, you've just hit upon a key point as well that I was going to make. Too much hygiene can be bad because, of course, like you say, you need to build up some kind of immune system that can deal with minor, I don't know, minor intrusions of things. Yeah. If your body hasn't seen it before, it can't build up. Exactly. That, well, that's what thing, inje- the injections are, aren't they? They give you the... Jobbies. They claim they don't, but... They're, mm. they're dead forms of the disease, so your oh, body right. can get used to them, and then people the people have been known to uh, to actually make themselves resistant to poison before by taking small amounts of it at a time over a period of time, and gradually the body can manage to expel it without it having the effect it would have on an uninitiated person. It's like you say, it's all about building up a resistance. So yeah, too much hygiene. Exactly like too much dirt, you know, it's going to have a, it's going to have a negative effect in the end. Mike, I read an article somewhere that yeah. suggested that kids nowadays are far more prone to illnesses and diseases because their parents are afraid to let them go out and play and get sort of filthy and exposure to, you know, air and dirt as often as kids of previous generations. Yeah, no, I can see it, especially when they're growing. Uh, as you love to hear uh-huh. but especially when they're growing and you know they're getting used to you know their bodies are, are, are acclimatising to its surroundings yeah no it's not the same like I remember like obviously well it, it, it is different these days like when we were young you, you go out and go and roll around in dirt all day and uh, like come back covered and head to toe with dirt because you've been playing football and, and the mud patch in the goal and that, you know you're getting your natural mud patch forms <laughs> in the goal and then it's your turn in goal and you dive around in it and you don't care and you've got mud all over your face but you don't care you just wipe it from your eyes so you can still see and then you carry on playing it's encouraged to go out and do that stuff like go out and get muddy and dirty and scratch yourself and hurt yourself and just it's part of growing up and come back when you're hungry do you know what I mean? we grow, we grow <laughs> but these days it's not so much like that is it? no unfortunately no it's, it's very sad that some parents clearly see fit to try and wrap their children in cotton wool, no doubt inspired by tabloids mentioning of paedophiles lurking around every bush and and obviously cars waiting to run their kids down and then drive away. 
obviously we've come a long way from the mid 19th century in terms of hygiene do you think we peaked and now we're slacking off again is there, is there an argument towards that that people aren't as clean as they could stand to be no you don't think we've slackened off I... I'm only saying so because I read another yeah. article fairly recently cool. I say fairly recently about a year ago I think which said that hospitals had only recently started posting up notices again to remind staff to consistently wash their hands after touching a patient or touching surfaces around patients because simple proceed because there've been so many developments and so much new machinery and you know so much more to remember people have forgotten the Basics. very very basic aspects of their job to prevent spread of infection and I'm not just talking about hospitals. Why are you talking about other than the hospitals? And well, other people. Do you, do you think, for instance, you know, we used to take it for granted. Do you think people still wash their hands after going to the toilet every time? I, yeah, I, I don't know. Not any more or less frequently than no. they. Or use soap. I don't know. I, I can't think of any reason why that. Why, okay. no, why just, numbers would go down I was just throwing, throwing it in there I mean look just look at the bird flu and swine flu thing or touching food stuff like that do, do you think uh, people are as vigilant as they used to be uh, most people I can't see people getting less vigilant you know where things go round viruses well I think maybe colds and stomach bugs and stuff yeah Surely, surely that has something to do with somebody not washing their hands after certain things. Maybe lots of the, lots of it's airborne, though, isn't it? Well, some of it, yeah, I agree with that. But again, isn't that hygiene? For instance, are people sneezing into a tissue? That doesn't eliminate the issue. Not completely. It eliminates it almost entirely. What I'm trying to say, Mike, is somebody who comes in with a stinking cold. And everyone's like, oh, don't go too close to me, jokingly. All that, t all it takes is for that person to sneeze into their hand without using a tissue, unless they then go and wash their hands straight away. They're going to pass that onto doors, tables, probably maybe shake people's hands. Easy done, isn't it? Or they start kissing me, or... The... Or more, yeah. Uh... Okay. But food hygiene at home, there are five, apparently five key principles... A food hygiene. According I've done a food hygiene course. I oh, should really? Know okay, go on then. Uh, do they come as a surprise to you? Why don't you read them out for us, Mr. Big Shot? I know all about these. I know all about this. I'm uh, a little bit of an expert. Okay. If say so myself, uh, I'll, uh, I'll let you know what they are. Uh, prevent contaminating food with pathogens spreading from people, pets and pests. That's the first one. Second one. Separate raw and cooked foods to prevent contaminating from the cooked foods. Oh, the, the cooked foods. I'll tell you what. <laughs> that's great reading. Are basically, you, are that, you, like, you should know that anyway. You're basically like Homer, aren't you? Yeah. Where you learn something new, something else goes out of your brain, like being able to read English. Pretty much. Also, I'm pretty tired. But yeah, but you, sh you guys should know that already. Like in your fridges at home, where you put your food and whatnot. Yeah. Tree's quite interesting for the uninitiated because, of course... Cook. You don't just cook things because they taste good warm or they, f you know, make you feel warm inside. No, it's you do it to kill pathogens. To kill the Number three is cook foods for the appropriate length of time and at the appropriate temperature to kill pathogens. Four, store food at the proper temperature. And, of course, the proper conditions. If you store food in a very damp environment, for instance, that's going to be far more likely to uh, go off, spoil easily. Of course. And uh, finally, use safe water and raw materials. So there you grow. <laughs> Very good, Mike. That's what she said. Of course, no, she didn't. Of course, uh, most of us, I would hope, don't do something puffinated like handle raw chicken and then not wash our hands properly I do. and thoroughly before touching something else. I do. I'm sure you do. I also took a course that's uh, related to that. I'm always handling raw meat. Go on. Oh. I really hope you wash your hands after that. Never. <laughs> so yeah, the the course I took was about bloodborne pathogens and what have you, particularly the two hepatitises, saying how long infected blood can actually stay virile, uh, available to to transmit. 
In other words, any spilt blood or whatever, it's basically clean what you can see and clean what you can't see as well. So that's the basic premise. Any surface that's that's uh, likely to be touched by human hands or human bodies, keep washing it off, keep spraying it with antiseptic, <clears throat> and you won't go far wrong. Dispose of things securely, safely. But yeah, Mike, a bugbear of mine that I've been meaning to get out on. In this particular show. Come on. We're going to talk about, Mike, personal hygiene. We've just discussed it. We're, we're generally pretty good. I mean, I hope neither of us doesn't wash our hands, for instance, after yeah. going to the toilet. And and obviously, we, we shower every day more if we've done something particularly sweaty, what have you. <clears throat> what I'm going to talk about, Mike, is other people's hygiene habits. <laughs> because if there's one thing that can actually wind people up... The reason I say this, Mike, is obviously... Because what I just said, you, you, somebody has a cold or a stomach bug, you don't want to catch it. You're desperate not to catch it. You you really just want them to get over it without transmitting it to you or your family. Of course. So you take the precautionary steps. You know, you don't get too close to them. When you sneeze, you do it into a tissue. You wash your hands after going to the toilet. You wash your hands after eating, these kinds of things. But it's all undone if somebody else, some other puffin decides that that's not for them the classic case being public toilets obviously well yeah but how many filthy you know what you're getting of... you know what you're getting with public toilets to be to be fair at least with public toilets uh you you have to be you have to have a bit of a well you have to have a bit of a flu wish if you really trust yourself touching the door with bare hands so you know, if you have hand sanitizer, either that or, you know, you nudge the door open with your shoulder or your elbow, you try not to come into contact with it, because we're just talking about sober people, but how many pissheads stagger into the toilet, probably pee all over their hands, and then just stagger out, touching everything in sight. Me. Exactly. One. Mike, there's, there's maybe one person in particular we might be referring to here. He might not live a million miles away. Do you have any messages for this person about his uh, lack of personal hygiene? No, because it would be inappropriate to do so. <laughs> okay. Sometimes it can be quite funny, and I'm obviously going to come up with a hypothetical scenario. Of course, nobody really lives like this, that we know. But there are certain people really? for whom <laughs> hygiene is a, is a completely alien concept. You know, there's no connection between them getting sick and whatever. And because maybe they don't live with other people, maybe they just live with animals, <laughs> for instance, just as an example, they don't believe that hygiene applies to them. And I'm not just talking about washing the hands if they've been to the toilet, I'm talking about maybe showering or bathing more than once in a blue moon, not changing their clothes regularly. Getting to the stage where there's an aura around them that people tend to steer clear of because the smell is too putrid. Perhaps they live in a rubbish tip and share dog food with their pets. What do you have to say about these kind of characters, Mike? Um, other than it being you in 30 years' time. Other than it being me in 30 <laughs> years' time. You're an arsehole. <laughs> That's what I've got to say about it. Nice people. <laughs> Did... Uh, <clears throat> What I'm saying, Mike, are these people... Do we Should we tolerate these people? I mean, OK, assuming that they're not awesome antisocial assholes. If they're perfectly pleasant people who, you know, get on with people, do you, is it something we should just allow, you know, allow to happen, not question it? You can't tell other people how to live their lives. Uh, well, what if it impinges on you? If they're your next neighbour and they burn rubbish in their garden, um, they you know, you can smell faeces in their house... Maybe it is a problem. That's all I'm saying. I see your point. Okay, let's take it a stage further. What if you work with a person like that? I do. Oh, you're a douche. No, seriously. If somebody had a problem like that at work, what would, what would you do if someone... A colleague of yours... Say someone who worked under you. New starter. What? Because obviously it wouldn't be someone who worked there for years. Say there's a new starter... Why wouldn't it be someone that worked there for years? Because I'm pretty sure that the problem probably would have been highlighted to them. Hey, 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 I said, hey, what's growing on? Mike, let me give you some scenarios. 
grow on. Okay. Would you... What would be your reaction if someone you knew had bad halitosis? What would be my reaction? Yeah, how would you deal with it? I don't really, I don't really understand the question. If the breath stunk, would, would you, you say mean, anything to them? What do you mean? My, you can't. It, you really, you that's just, that's a question. What was your, on. what was your question? What would you do? You just like not. You shrink away, would you? Try not to mention it. It depends who they were. If it was so, if it was someone, if well, it was someone my, you wouldn't mind insulting. If it was, insulting, if it was my boss, then no. <laughs> <laughs> that's harsh. So you're saying you'd happily potentially offend someone as long as they didn't have the power to uh, dismiss you? <laughs> no, I didn't say that either. What if it was a close friend of yours? Then I might say something. If it was a stranger, then I probably well, <laughs> well, then I might. No, I might say something. I don't know. Mm. It depends who it is. If I have to spend much time with them or not. Yeah. Often it's just not worth. But do you not think saying that, anything? Well, so you wouldn't think maybe it'd be a favour to that person. O- uh, obviously, and you know, a, a backhand. Depends how well you know them. Like, obviously, you wouldn't say it in front of a group of people, like make everyone laugh at them. Just like in private, just like, um, mate, you won't want to do something about your breath. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. So, like I said, it depends so, who it is. So your answer is, is okay. So your answer is depending on who the person is. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I thought I was pretty much a given. So like. okay, okay, no, that's fair enough. Because uh, I've got to say, and you know, this might apply to me as well, from time to time. But people I know, and it's pretty much an even split of male and female, have had really bad breath. It's not, you know, it's nothing to do with who you perceive to be clean. Like I say, it's pretty fifty-fifty between male and female. The mouth is is a cauldron for uh, bacteria. So unless you're very very vigilant, a lot of people have bad breath from time to time. I'm not just talking about dog breath in the morning. I'm talking about you know, feces, that kind of smell. Feces. Yeah, seriously. Honestly, I'm talking about that kind of bad breath. And can I just give a shout out to someone who obviously I'm not going to name on the radio, but the person with the worst breath I've ever smelled in my life, I actually worked with once. A long time ago, this person. I believe, Ape shit. This person, I believe, was possibly a manager of the business. She had the worst breath I'd ever smelled. The only thing I could compare it to is, uh, say, you you have a dog and you let them defecate onto oh, on, onto a onto a paintbrush, and then you you paint it all over the walls. That that's that was the smell, and not only was that the smell, it actually projected quite far. You could stand a foot away, and it was still really, really bad. This person also had terrible teeth, so That's I'm guessing lovely. they they didn't really pay much attention to mouth hygiene of any sort. Okay, Mike, but, Thanks, but uh, yeah, but bre- breath, okay, breath's a, you know, it's an iffy one. But Mike, seriously, if if someone you know at work that you work with, one of your colleagues, comes in and you know th- they smell really bad. I'm talking about body odor, like you know, they they clearly haven't showered in a couple of days. Mm. What what at what point do you say something to them? Uh, See, I like this because it's an awkward question. You can't give a straight answer, can you? When it when it gets to the point where I can't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> How do you phrase it? Come on, exactly like that. <laughs> when it gets to, when it gets to the point I can't take it anymore, I'll tell them. Well, and you, I'll fucking you tell just them good. you just say I can't take it anymore. For yeah. God's sake, get home now. Oh, it Pressure depen- washer. It depends who it is. It's like, you know, me, like, when the big fella, <laughs> well, I used to work with the big fella not that long ago. Yeah, bless him. You know, he did sweat previously. We, we, we used to do long days, a lot of working. We yeah. go here, yeah, hold up our, our arms, go have a whiff on that. Uh, yeah. My, that's sick. That sounds like a sex game. Yeah, it is, it was. <laughs> Yeah, bloody out, bloody out, big fella. You got a bit of a pong on today. <laughs> <laughs> Musky, like it. <laughs> smell a man, beautiful. What's which wrong point, with it? Which boy just flap his little wings? Go, smelling go, like man. Go for a fly, catch a fish or two, come back. Yeah. <laughs> oh bless him. I've ac- okay. Let me give you another example. This is going to be lot an- lots of anecdotal examples. Uh there was a girl I used to work with many many years ago. Anyway, I I couldn't quite figure out, but she was very strange. And um, there were times in a crowded telemarketing office where she'd actually scratch herself down there. Decent. 
Jeez. Yeah, but I walk around doing that. You, well, yeah, I I stand accused of potentially making it a sexist issue, but it's just as bad if a guy does it. If it's you, does it even worse? Piss off. It's just, oh, filthy. Don't put your hands on your genitals when other people are around, for God's sake. Why not? Oh, I see. And don't if, put your hands on your genitals. And if you do, go straight people... to the toilet and wash your bloody no, hands. Don't put your hands on your genitals when other people are around, because they could do it for you. Oh, is that good Mike logic? Yeah. God's sake. Do, do you, uh, Mike, do you use much disinfectant or antiseptic around the house? Uh, in certain areas. Or do you wait uh, until you're actually, do you wait until you're actually sick or you've cut yourself or something? Only for cleaning. Yeah? What's your relationship with bleach? What's my relationship with it? Yeah. Well, we've been seeing each other for a couple of months. <laughs> uh, things have got physical. <laughs> and, you know, I find it's a gentle lover, so... I would have thought it'd do some damage to you down there. Well, that's what you'd have thought, but give it a chance. You should, try, be you should try boiling it. I've heard well, that. My pubes I've are now blonde. I've <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I've heard the boy in it. That's a good party trick. I'm sure it is. So basically, your answer to those questions were: if you knew someone whose hygiene was uh, a little bit disreputable, you actually would just bottle out of saying anything. No. Unless they were someone you didn't really like and who didn't have any power over you. Or you saying it in jest. Or you saying in jest. Okay, so are you a person who says it in jest as a way of trying to get through to someone, <laughs> you know, like. Oh, get that stinky breath away from me. Mm, As maybe, a joke, maybe not quite thinking, like that. You know, maybe a bit of salty breath out, get some mouthwash. Maybe not quite like that, but yeah. I, I guess. It, it depends who it is, where I am, what the situation is, how often I have to deal with it. Yeah. Etc. Would it, would it get you really angry, though, Mike? How bad it is. Yeah. Would it get you really angry if someone at work had a stomach upset and you were, like, obviously adamant you wouldn't want to have it? And, uh,. You kept yourself as clean as possible, and then because you know there was only this one who'd had it in the office at the time, you then caught it a couple of days later. Would you be really angry at them for not like keeping clean themselves? Because clearly they'd have transmitted it to you. No. No. Oh, okay. Shit spreads, man. Get over it. Get over it. You say it. Well, we we'll say that when you're spending a week on the shitter. Hey, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I think I'd love more than spending a week. Sorry, on the it shitter. doesn't really change your lifestyle, does it? Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, <clears throat> what about cleaning under your nails, Mike? Are you a stickler for that? Generally, whenever I wash my hands. Oh yeah. I clean under I've got to admit that's the one part. That's the one part of hygiene that I'm not particularly good at, and I'm ashamed. Really, it, it's no, nothing to do with being lazy. I actually do forget. Yeah, well, that's so there, yeah. where a lot most germs are kept underneath nails. Do, do, yeah. Do you know? Do you know where I heard uh, is an absolute breeding ground for disease and transmitting anything? My genitals. <laughs> That goes without saying. Keyboards at work. Yeah. Especially because nowadays more and more people are eating at their keyboards, which is pretty stupid. Because other than dropping crumbs, obviously, in between the keys and potentially screwing up the technology, it's uh, you know it's well known that eating is something that can pass on all kinds of things. You know, saliva, your hands fondling it, whatever. It's oh, my hands are fondled something. Top fonder. Well... I'm not going to argue with that, to be honest. Don't be dirty. Yeah, save water and share a bath. With me. With Mike, yeah. It's about to add. And it's the last goodbye from us.